Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Ask DRTK. Hope you're having a great day. You know, a number of you have asked me about phantom power. Does phantom power matter? And so today we're going to find out. Now, condenser microphones like this Warm Audio WA47JR require phantom power to make the diaphragm sensitive to audio. Without it, they simply won't produce any sound. And that power is generally provided through the XLR cable from your interface, your mixer, perhaps a preamp, or even a dedicated power supply. There are some condenser microphones that offer a battery option for built-in as well, like the Rode M3 that I recently reviewed. But in general, phantom power is something that you need to consider when connecting a microphone up to either an interface, mixer, or other device. Phantom power for microphones has been around for a long time. The first one actually was brought out by the Sheps company from Germany back in 1964. It was a 9 to 12 volt model that was built specifically for French radio. It was called the CMT20. Now the first 48 volt phantom power microphone was actually released by Neumann a couple of years later. And it really that KM84 it was called was the first 48 volt phantom powered microphone that the standard eventually caught on from. And in fact, there are three standards. There's also a 24 volt standard that was supposed to become the universal choice, but it never really caught on in a big way. And so you see most microphones today that are phantom powered suggest that they need 48 volts. And the question is, if you connect a microphone that's spec for 48 volts up to an interface or a mixer that provides 12 volts, will it change the sound? Will it be quieter? Will it color it? Will it even work at all? And so I have my PS400 variable phantom power supply and we can test 12 volt and 48 volts. So in this video, I'm actually going to go through a number of microphones. I'll do a frequency analysis using a sine sweep from 20 to 24,000 Hertz with both 12 volts and 48 volts. So we can see just what difference it makes in the kind of most controlled way I can possibly do it. I'll also go ahead and do a comparison of 48 volts from the PS400 supply against 48 volts from a preamp, just to see if the manufacturer of the 48 volts makes a difference as well. And while this is not a fully scientific test, it will give you an idea if phantom power matters. I'm gonna test pencil and large diaphragm condensers, including electret and true condensers. We'll also test a shotgun microphone. So let's get right to it with the Audio-Technica AT2021. And spoiler alert, it matters, but not the same with all microphones. And so here's a comparison of 12 volts versus 48 volts on the AT2021. And as you can see, the profile is very similar on both of these frequency graphs. Some minor, minor differences in kind of the upper mid frequencies, but I would suggest you'd be pretty hard pressed to tell one apart from the other. Now let's check out the MXL606. And this is the comparison with the MXL606. And you can see that the 12 volt is lacking some of the high frequency in terms of amplitude that we get with the 48 volts. So the capsule is not quite as sensitive to those high, high frequencies on 12 volts here. And that's gonna make a difference. I think you will hear it. There'll be kind of a lack of extension and air if you use this with 12 volts compared to 48 volts. Probably very usable, but there is a difference here. Now let's check out the AKG P170. Now we're looking at the AKG P170 and you can see that this microphone actually shows quite a bit of difference between 12 volts and 48 volts phantom power. Definitely the amplitude in the lower frequencies is higher with 48 volts. Sensitivity through those mid frequencies also quite a bit higher. We're again lacking the upper response in the 12 volts here. So this microphone is gonna sound very different with 12 volts and 48 volts of phantom power. Definitely gonna pick it up. I'm going to say that this microphone would need 48 volts to really perform as it's intended to. Uh, but, uh, I mean, does it create sound with 12 volts? Yes. Probably not exactly what the designers had in mind. Now let's go ahead and move over to a large diaphragm. We're going to check out the Audio-Technica AT2020.
Now we're looking at the comparison on the AT2020 and you can see that the 12 volts really lacks a lot of extension in those upper mids and highs. And that'll definitely change the sound profile of the microphone. And so, you know, I kind of thought that the large diaphragm would probably need that higher voltage to make the, the diaphragm sensitive. But, uh, you know, this really, this really shows you that the 48 volts greatly increases the sensitivity on the AT2020 in those higher ranges. Now we'll take a look at another large diaphragm. We'll go to the MXL990. Now I have the comparison with the MXL 990 and I have the Blaze Edition, which has the LEDs. And I thought, well, wow, with that extra current draw, the 48 volts is gonna make a big difference. And interestingly enough here, the profile definitely shows greater amplitude across all frequency ranges at 48 volts. So we're getting, we're getting more sensitivity across the entire frequency range here with that extra voltage. But what's really interesting to me about this mic is that I'm seeing enhanced sensitivity in the very low range Kind of a little less of a difference in terms of the profile in the mids and the highs, although we're getting, again, overall a lot more amplitude across all frequencies. But the major point of difference with this mic is definitely in that low range. That'll cause the difference in coloration from the 12 versus 48 volts. Now I want to take a look at an inexpensive condenser before I check out this FET condenser microphone. We'll take a look at the Mayono AU P320S. This is an inexpensive XLR condenser microphone. And given that there are a number of mixers available in, again, that inexpensive price range that offer 12 volts phantom power, I thought this would be a good comparison. And so now looking at the comparison of the Mayono AU P320S with 12 volts versus 48 volt phantom power, you can see actually very little difference in the sound profile here, really across all the ranges. I would say that, again, this is a microphone that you probably wouldn't notice a great deal of coloration between these two voltages. So probably very usable with, again, some of these inexpensive mixers that deliver 12 volts phantom power. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, WA47JR on the test. And again, it's kind of the other end of the spectrum of microphones that I've included in this test anyways. I expect this one to require a lot more power, so let's find out. And as expected, now looking at the WA47JR, there's considerably less amplitude across all the frequency ranges, so much so that we actually get to the point where we lose a lot of the upper frequencies. So there's gonna be a big difference here in terms of the coloration of the sound, 12 volts versus 48 volts. Now, before I wrap up this test, I'm gonna throw a shotgun microphone on here as well. So I'm gonna throw on the Synco Mic D2. And now looking at the comparison with the Synco Mic D2, we can see that when you run on 12 volts, you do end up losing some information in the mid-range, and a lot of the highs are very, very much uh, disappearing, really. Now, depending on your use for a shotgun microphone, you know, if everything is in the vocal range, that may not be an issue for you, so it may be very usable in this case, but certainly, again, the upper extension we're missing uh, with the uh, sensitivity difference between 12 volts and 48 volts. Now, beyond the sine wave test, I wanted to give you an idea with spoken word of what the difference would be. So again, I'm using the WA47JR here. I have it connected into my ART voice channel, but I've replaced the phantom power supply in here again. I'm using the PS400 instead of the built-in phantom power in the voice channel. And so right now you have 48 volts with the PS400. This is a sound that you get. I'm gonna switch over to 12 volts and we'll see if you can hear any difference. And now I've switched the PS400 over to 12 volts. So 12 volts, no changes on the settings on the ART voice channel. Everything is exactly the same, but less phantom power. And so this is what my voice sounds like through the 12 volts. You can see if you can tell the difference. And for the last test, we'll see if we can find a difference between phantom power from two different supplies. 
I'm going to use the WA47JR since it seemed to be the most demanding on Phantom Power. And we'll go ahead and compare Phantom Power from the Scarlet 8i6 versus Phantom Power from the PS400. And looking at this comparison, you can see both recordings were made through the Scarlet 8i6. Just the one on the top is using the internal phantom power supply, and the one on the bottom is using the PS400. And the shape is very similar, amplitude's very similar. There is a, a few frequencies with slight variances here. We all know that phantom power supplies don't produce exactly the voltage that they're spec'd at. So both of these say 48 volts, but neither one is going to be exactly 48 volts. But in practical terms, could you tell the difference here? Probably not. You know, in my studio, I'm using Furman power conditioners. I got trip light ISO bars. I'm doing everything I can possibly do to isolate any sort of external electrical interference that might affect these tests. Again, nothing is perfect, but I'm trying to do that. And I would say that looking at these two, likely you couldn't tell the difference from one or the other in practical use. And so based on the test, I think one thing we can say is there is no one general rule here. You know, we can't say that, well, it's all right with all small diaphragm condensers, but large ones need more power. Really, there is a lot of variance across the types of microphones and the manufacturers. So what I've done actually is I've started including this phantom power test in my microphone reviews. So any of my microphone reviews where the mic requires phantom power, I've started using 12 volt and 48 volt just as a comparison test so that you can see if the microphone is gonna be suitable for what you have. And if you're interested in microphones, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.